This is an activity I call brown cloud. I usually use it in the acid base section of uh, my year. However, by this point, the students have seen the reaction between copper and nitric acid many times. Now, you've got to be careful with this reaction. I say my students have seen it. They've never actually performed it because of the brown cloud that's produced. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, nitric acid has, uh, we're using concentrated nitric acid here. There's a lot of uh, safety issues with that. I don't let my students do that. Um, but let's go over to the board and talk about the reaction between nitric acid and copper. This is not your typical single replacement reaction where um, normally when you have a metal and an acid, students would think that the metal gets oxidized and the hydrogen gets reduced, even if you've never used the terms oxidized and reduced before, even if you've talked, only talked about replaced the copper is going to replace the hydrogen. This doesn't happen with copper, though. Copper is not reactive in acid in that same way. If you put copper in hydrochloric acid, the copper will not replace the hydrogen. If you put it in sulfuric acid, it will not replace the hydrogen. So what happens in nitric acid that's different? In this case, the copper, and we start talking about colors that they know. Colors are very important. Uh, copper is a copper color. I'm just going to call it copper because that is a color. And nitric acid, they should be familiar with. If not, I'll show it to them. And that's colorless. I try to avoid the word clear because I tell them that blue Kool-Aid is clear. So clear is not a description of color. Nitric acid is colorless. Well, the copper does get oxidized or if I haven't talked about oxidation, the copper does turn into an ion. That's good enough for them. It goes from being a solid to aqueous. And what color is copper in aqueous solution? They better say blue at this point. But in this case, it's not the hydrogen that gets reduced. It's the nitrogen. And if we've talked about it already, I can talk about oxidation numbers. Um, but you don't have to. Now, I'm doing colors here, so what color is nitrogen dioxide? I, I don't know. They've, they don't have experience with that, so we're going to let that one slide. Okay, Water, what color is water? Well, I hope they know that one. Um, now, that might not be true at the beginning of the year in my classroom when I first turn on the faucets for the first time, but <laughs> it, it should be colorless. And then we got some leftover nitrate ions. Well, what color are nitrate ions? Now, think about it. If the nitric acid had nitrate ions and it was colorless, then these ions should be colorless too. OK. And it depends on which students they are, whether I actually make them learn this. My advanced students have to learn this reaction. Um, I test them on it several times over the year. First time I test them on it, oh, about 90% of them write hydrogen gas as a product, even though I've told them. Then, we, then I yell at them. Next time, only 50% write hydrogen gas as a product. By this time in the year, hopefully nobody's writing hydrogen gas as a product. So this is our reaction. This is the thing we're not familiar with so far. So let's go take a look at what actually happens. Again, I don't let the students do this one. Um, anytime I do this reaction, it's in a closed system, a cap tube, or something. In this case, I'm going to use a baggie. And Practice ahead of time so that you know that you're going to get a very good seal on that baggie. That's very important. Okay. In the baggie, I'm going to start by just putting some water. And I'm going to put some water in just in the corner of the baggie. Now, when I put this dish into the water, I don't want the water to get into the dish. In one of the wells of the dish, I just have a little piece of copper metal. and I have sandpapered it. Make sure that I get the oxidation off. If you don't, this will work. It'll just take a long time. I know that from experience. So I want to put the dish into the bag, but I don't want the water to get inside the dish. I want it to be kind of underneath. And it's not too hard with these large dishes. So you see I have here, I have this big well plate and there's a puddle of water in the bottom of the dish. Now it's important here, we know, we know about limiting reactants. I assume the students do by now. Um, it's important here 
that your nitric acid is your limiting reactant. You really want to make sure that you have copper left over when you're done. So don't overdo it on the nitric acid. Okay, we've got nitric acid concentrated. I don't want that on my hands. So I'm going to put some gloves on. If you've ever had nitric acid on your hands, you'll know why. And if you haven't, don't experience it. It's not very fun. Turns your hands all kinds of shades of yellow and brown and black. And this is the hard part if you're not very well coordinated. I want to put some acid into the well with the copper at the same time that I want to close the baggie. Now, I don't have a lot of acid in there. Uh, hopefully it's enough. It should be. So one of the things that I do is I actually, after I've got the acid in there, I cut that. Now be careful because the tip still has some acid in it, so I certainly don't want to be fr uh, careless with that. All right. I don't want the reaction to start, though, until after the baggie's closed. So with these large well plates, I'm usually pretty good at manipulating this. Try to get the air out without squeezing the pipette. Okay, and of course, coordination becomes more difficult with gloves on, but that's okay, it's worth it. Okay, so I've got copper, got some water in the bottom of the baggie, I've got my acid in the pipette. So I turn the pipette sideways, push the tip down, and squeeze. Get the pipette out of the way. And you should be able to see right away that there is a reaction happening. Um, we see some bubbles forming. We should see a color. Uh, right now the color seems to be concentrated on the right around the copper, but we can definitely see the bubbles. And as that continues, we should be able to see that the gas is not colorless. The gas has a color. Okay. So, Let's go back to the board for a second while that's cooking and try to figure out where that color's coming from. There's only one substance on the board we haven't identified yet, and that's NO2. Well, we can say two things about it now. Since that's the only thing we haven't identified, and it's the only product there that's putting up a color that we haven't written down, let's assume that the color goes with the NO2, and that happens to be brown. And the other thing we can identify about NO2 right now is that it's a gas. It's bubbles. The brown are bubbles. Okay. So now we've identified a new substance. We know its color. We know its phase at room temperature. Okay, back to the bag. See what's happening now. Now we've got a pretty good, we're still bubbling here. We want this reaction to go to completion. I'm going to mix it up just a little bit, get some more copper exposed. Okay. And you really do want this reaction to go to completion because, uh, like I said, you don't really want any leftover acid in there. Okay. One thing I always tell my students, colored gases are always toxic. Okay. I don't mean the white stuff you see coming out of your teapot when it's bubbling because that's not a gas, that's uh, water vapor in the air, but colored gases, whether they're yellow or green or brown, they're always toxic, and that's why we're doing this in a closed system. Okay. Well, great. Now, what are we going to do with that gas when you're done? You're just going to open it up and let it out in the room? No, because there's another thing that's important about these gases, is that they're extremely soluble in water. So what have we talked about so far? We've talked about the reaction of copper with nitric acid, we talked about the color and the phase of nitrogen dioxide. Now we're going to talk about the solubility of that gas in water. Because if you remember, we've got water in the bottom of the bag, and that was distilled water. Now I'm going to manipulate my pipette kind of out of the way without opening the bag. And what I want to do now, get the pipette up here, is without spilling what's in the plate, now this is kind of hard if you've got coordination problems, but without spilling what's in the plate, I want the water 
to mix with the gas. And I can do that by lifting by the plate, keeping that pipette out of the way, and just kind of swirling the water around without spilling that plate. What we're showing here, that nitrogen dioxide is extremely soluble in water. Now, so by mixing that around, I'm getting the gas that's in here to mix with the water. All right. Now, it's not completely mixed because I still see some brown gas in there, but hopefully I've got enough of it mixed. And the students say, well, so what? How do we know it's mixed? Well, like I said, we're dealing a lot with colors today. So let's get the nitric acid out of the way and bring my new solution out, which happens to be universal indicator. Now, since we're in the acid and base unit, we may or may not have talked about indicators yet. But universal is one of the ones I make sure the students understand. I don't want too much of this. Um, universal indicator is a bluish green right now. It's pretty close to neutral. And I want to do this without, and there's still some gas in there. Let me, let me try to get rid of a little bit more of that gas, get a little bit more of that gas dissolved in the water. Um, as you're doing this, you see the brown start to fade, and that is using up the gas, getting it dissolved in the water. Now I'm going to do this through the tiniest hole I possibly can. If I can get that open. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit of universal indicator in there. And you should be able to see immediately that it turns a bright red. I'm going to turn that around for you. Okay. And I've definitely, I've sealed the bag back up because we're still reacting in there. So what has happened? The gas dissolved in the water. And it turned the universal indicator red. Well, this is where we talk about what the colors of universal indicator are. Green, blue is fairly neutral, maybe a little bit on the basic side. Blue is on the basic side of neutral. This is nowhere near green or blue, it's red. Red is definitely acidic. So the other issue that comes up now is, where in our lives is nitric, nitrogen dioxide produced? It's one of the emissions from burning fossil fuels. Well, if it's in the air and it happens to rain, it's going to dissolve in the rain. And so this is where I talk about acid rain and the acid falling through these gases. Nitrogen dioxide is only one of the gases that can cause acid rain. Okay. So we've covered a lot of topics here. We've reviewed our single replacement reactions. We've reviewed our activity series. Copper is, not, uh, is more, less reactive than hydrogen gas, so it doesn't oxidize or reduce the hydrogen. It reduces the nitrogen instead. Talked about acid base. Talked about acid rain. Universal indicator. There's a lot of applications to this. It's in a closed system. If I'm still worried about the nitrogen dioxide gas in there, I just dump the whole thing, mix it all together, and then as soon as I open it under the hood, I add water to it, and it shouldn't be an issue. You know you've got nitrogen gas loose because it happens to smell a lot like chlorine gas. So as long as you're not smelling that, you should be okay. So that's my version of the brown cloud. Thank you.